right, welcome to 1958. So here we are, sitting in the uh, 58 Corvette. We've got uh, five, uh, six gauges to look at. We've got a fuel gauge, temperature gauge, battery gauge, and oil pressure gauge. And then in the center, we have a speedometer on top in a half moon shape and a tachometer in the middle of that. So this car is a 283 with two four barrels, uh, producing 245 horsepower, standard shift, four speed transmission. This car has uh, tons of options. AM radio, a heater, and seat belts. A 283 with two four barrels, um, producing 245 horsepower. Those are the options for the car. Only, uh, only other options that the car doesn't have uh, was a big brake system and uh, power windows. It also has dual tops. So it has a hard top and a soft top. Uh, that's down, I gotta get this thing going. Okay. So we got manual steering, hence the big steering wheel that we have. Um, so there's no power steering in this car as well. There is no power brakes. So you need to judge yourself accordingly when you uh, drive this car and uh, coming up to intersections, slow down appropriately because uh, while the car will stop, um, a fair bit of effort is required to do so. Uh, we've changed this car over the year a little bit. We've added the radial tires to it to help make it a more drivable car. These cars came with bias ply tires, and uh, bias ply tires uh, had uh, no real uh, structural rigidity in the sidewall, so uh, the cars would pretty well float all over the place down the road and be quite, quite live to drive, so uh, having a radial tire on it actually makes it a much easier car to drive. Um, you know, we got uh, pretty pretty limited. We got a, a pole handbrake, which is down here on the left-hand side, so it's not actual lever in the center of the car. It's up under the dash on the left-hand side. We've got a light switch, we got our wipers, and we got a cigarette lighter um, and an ashtray. No cup holders in this car, which uh, make it a challenge in today, and no place to uh, charge your uh, cell phone as well, unless you plug it directly into the, uh, into the cigarette lighter. Pretty cool feature about this car, and we talked about the 2020 Corvette and its visibility. This car has amazing visibility, uh, particularly when the top is off, because all you have in front of you is your windshield, and it's a curved glass, uh, which is pretty unique. Uh, cars in the, in the 30s uh, and 40s uh, pretty well all had straight glass, and, and when the cars of the 50s came, they put curved glass in. Um, another pretty cool thing about these cars, and, and this particular car, when you look at a current Corvette, and you look at the 2020 Corvette that we're profiling, is that the current Corvette, uh, or the, uh, this car is full of chrome. Everything is chrome. You've got chrome mirrors inside, I've got chrome indicator levers, chrome horn button, chrome mirrors, chrome grill, chrome bumpers, chrome ashtray covers, chrome seat belt buckles. Everything is chrome in this car. If you look at the current cars, uh, there's not one piece of chrome on the uh, 2020 uh, C8 that we have. Um, another pretty cool thing, we talked to this car as a heater, so uh, we can put, a, put it either on uh, defrost for the windshield or we can add heat to the floor. But there's also a vent that I can push and it's a three handle lever and it opens up a flap on the, on the, uh, just in front of the windshield and allows fresh air to come into this car. And it's pretty important because this car produces an awful lot of heat. These cars had a tendency to overheat back in their day particularly in very warm climates. And I've had this car overheat on me before uh, when you're in very uh, slow traffic. I was in a parade one time and had to stop and go, stop and go, and the car actually overheated and boiled over. Uh, but opening this vent actually cools off your feet because these cars produce so much heat. And the firewall, this car is just fiberglass. So you got a sheet of fiberglass between your feet and the engine. And as the uh, temperature of the car warms up, so does that firewall and so do the bottom of your shoes. And actually, you know, I always say you get out in the bottom of your shoes, feel like they're melting off because there's so much heat coming through the uh, firewall. So when I talked about the 283 with two four barrels, two four barrels is two four barrel carburetors. And when I step on my accelerator pedal, and right now I've got my foot, what seems to be to the floor. Now I'm slacked off again as they go into a corner, which you gotta be careful. Um, that's only the limitations of the first carburetor. And I pull this car back down in second gear, and now I put it... You can hear the roar of the dual carburetors opening up. 
Not really fast in comparison to today's cars, but really fast back in the day of 1958. And that's what makes this car so much fun to drive. Um, another cool feature about this car, which uh, we'll come on the, on the outside when we look at it, is where the exhaust comes out. The exhaust actually comes out in the rear bumpers of the cars. All the cars today, the exhaust comes out underneath the car, underneath the bumper. Uh, but in this particular car, the uh, bumpers is uh, on the back is where the exhaust comes out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another cool thing is about this uh, this uh, rear view mirror, which is mounted on the dash. You know, you all see the rear view mirrors are mounted on the windshields and look backwards. The C8 Corvette's uh, uh, rear view mirror is mounted on the windshield and uh, it uh, it has a camera mounted on the roof so you can actually turn the uh, turn the uh, camera on and uh, look out the rear view mirror this particular car it's mounted on the dash so you can look and see where you want uh, out of that all right so this car uh, on its odometer uh, shows 96,622,000 uh, miles on it um, while i can't verify that that's the actual mileage i suspect it is i think when uh, my dad acquired this car it had somewhere around 93 and 94 thousand miles on it so we probably put uh, six thousand or sorry three or three or four thousand miles on this car since uh, 1979 so it's not a lot of driving uh, another unique thing about this car is that the uh, the tachometer actually has a uh, revolutions per thousand uh, which it says so it's 5,000 rpm um, but it also has a counter and it's showing two uh, 231,663 revolutions um, on, the, uh, on the engine. And no power mirrors to adjust in this car. Just roll down the window and put your hand out there and uh, adjust it. My wife said the other day when she saw an old car driving by, why do, we, why do all the old car drivers always hang their arm out the window? Well, if you look at this, this car is kind of designed. You get in a new car, the uh, window heights are really either much higher than uh, the seating position in the car or the A pillars or the B pillar, which is the uh, pillar right behind the end of the door, is usually maybe a bit forward. So not a quite as easy just to lay your arm out the window. But these cars and, and a lot of the old cars were designed that your arm was always hanging out the window. So when you see old cars going down the road, you'll probably always see someone with their arm hanging out the window because it's a place to rest it. There's not a lot of room in this car as well, so uh, it makes it easy for me to lay my arm on that uh, window ledge and, uh, and also keep my wheels at the, my, my hands at the uh, nine and three position. So I'm gonna roll that up a little because it is a little noisy. We'll close up that vent a little as well. Cut down some of the road noise. Certainly uh, this car, lots of wind noise, lots of road noise compared to today's cars. The fit and finish of uh, the cars back in the 50s and 60s uh, were pretty uh, rudimentary. And uh, you know, the rubber seals and things over the years would dry out on these cars. This car, the rubber seals were all pretty good. We replaced them uh, many years ago. So uh, for what it is, not too much road noise in it. Getting in this car, uh, we use the key to unlock the door. Um, no power door locks in this car and certainly no remote unlocking for this car uh, as compared to the new Corvette uh, which has a, a key fob and there's actually no key for the car it's a push button on the dash and there's a sensor in the car that detects the uh, remote control uh, that is close to the car and when you walk up to the car it actually unlocks the doors without actually having to, uh, to press a button so you grab a hold of the door handle and, and it knows that you're uh, you're at the car and unlocks the doors for you. This particular car, we had to put the key in the uh, door lock and unlock it. Another unique thing about this car is uh, there's two keys on that key tag. And uh, one, uh, one, the one key operates the doors and the trunk as well as the ignition. And the other key is a lock for the center console, uh, which is right here. One thing's pretty cool about this car, and, and certainly about the uh, similarities in the Corvettes, is this car has a dual cockpit or dual uh, cockpit in it. So I'm sitting on this side, and I've got a curved dash, and on the passenger side, it's the same thing with a curved dash and a grab handle there for the passenger to hang on as the car accelerates. But uh, it's also defined by two things, which is uh, the waterfalls, which is what they call 
the split between the two seats and there's a waterfalls in the front and there's also sort of a waterfalls in the front or front uh, of the of the dash area below the dash and, and between the two seats the uh, corvette has always had that kind of dual cockpit uh, series and c8 they really amp or c7 they amplified that again and uh, in the c8 today there's definitely uh, a driver's compartment and a passenger's compartment really prof profound This car has a solid rear axle, so uh, um, the new Corvette has four-wheel independent uh, suspension. So each uh, each wheel operates independently of the other. This particular car has independent front suspension and then has a solid axle in the rear with two leaf springs, so much similar to many pickup trucks. But uh, most cars today have all switched to uh, independent front and rear suspensions, and Corvette uh, uh, continuing to evolve that. In 63 they went to a uh, a transverse mounted uh, spring so it was a big spring that went across and then uh, sort of made it a, a independent rear suspension in the car but this car has a solid solid rear axle. No windshield washer uh, fluid on this particular car. It was available I believe as an option and it was a button that you actually had to push and you know, like pump the pump the water to squirt onto the windshield. Uh, so this only has two modes. It's either uh, fast or slow. That's it uh, from the Wipers perspective. And they're driven on a cable and it's wrapped up under the dash. So a little motor in there will spin and then there's two wire cables that go out and, and hook onto the uh, ends of the Wipers uh, on the center. This car also has uh, what's pretty cool which is uh, um, two wing blade, uh, I don't know what you, how you describe them, but the, the blades uh, start from the center and sweep out to both sides of the car, which is pretty cool and unique looking. Um, never like to see them working because that means it's raining and uh, we definitely don't drive this car in the rain if we can avoid it. Another cool feature about uh, old car, new car, uh, classic versus uh, modern. Um, we all know about the clicker for your indicators and uh, there's a little relay that sits up under the dash of uh, the car, an old car. And when you push on the uh, push on the uh, turn signal, it uh, sends uh, power to it, and then that's the, the power uh, intermittently uh, clicks on and off. And that's that click, 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 click that you hear. In the new C8 Corvette, there's no more clicker. It's actually programmed right into the stereo of the car. So when you push the button or you push the indicator stock now to uh, to uh, turn, you'll actually hear uh, a sound that's been recreated that comes out through the speaker in the door of the, of the uh, 2020 Corvette. To sense this on camera or hear it, um, these cars actually smell. There's a lot of, uh, with a carbureted engine, and uh, every car today is a fuel injector car, so the carbureted engine basically pumped gas into a bowl and then air and mixed it and pumped it down into the engine. So you get a lot of the fumes and unburned gas and stuff that ends up going through the exhaust and make these cars a bit uh, stinky to drive. So right now I can smell the exhaust where we were sitting here at the light that kind of builds up and bellows inside the car. Probably another reason why they put that nice vent in the dash so that uh, you can get rid of that smell. 